Hello everyone. So obviously you can tell uh, I'm still here and uh, I'm not going anywhere. Obviously I'm tired from yesterday. Uh, my ankle is sore. And you know, it's not, not easy to, as you get older to, to take that much weight. And uh, a lot of soldiers uh, experience hip, knee, ankle, uh, lower back issues from from rucking you know upwards of 50 to 100 pounds on their backs of of equipment plus uh, plus supplies and and of course the service rifle and uh you know i'd probably be one of those guys with a c9 to be honest with you if that were my function uh because it takes the the strongest person is the one that gets the c9 right <laughs> and you imagine that that old uh, old machine gun uh, that the GPMG. Let's look at the weight here. It's the FN Mini Me. That's what they call it. Anyway, M two forty nine saw. So a lot of you are very familiar with that. And it's a long stroke gas operated system. It's weight, let's see this weight, it shows the weight. So the Canadian user, uh, C9 LMG standard factory FN, uh, steel tubular buttstock, Comes with Picton E-Rail, uh, 3.4 uh, magnification Elcan C79, uh, C C982 midlife upgrade introduced as a second barrel, which was shorter, both an upgraded muzzle device, so flash hider, uh, reducing eye or infrared green furniture, a C8 style collapsible stock, folding vertical foregrip, and laser aiming module. Uh, two C9s carried for each infantry, infantry section, which, yeah, I don't know, makes a lot of sense, you know. Uh, so a section, for those of you who are not in the know, including myself, uh, is a subunit, usually consists of between 6 and 20 personnel, uh, larger than a squad, but smaller than a platoon. Because, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm an Air Force guy. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't hump a hump a ruck, so to speak, but uh, you can't do very much without soldiers on the ground. Uh, as it's always said, right, you can't, you can't wage a war without boots on the ground. Uh, just the way it is, there's, there's no organization without people, there's no society without people. Uh, and uh, that's the reason why you would join in the first place, is to be part of a larger family. And you know, a lot of people don't have, don't have families or, uh, good up upbringings in the first place and that's what the attraction is uh you know to the military and uh unless you have altru altruistic reasons for doing it now this is my favorite mug here this was given to me by my, by my sister And, you know, as I, as I highlighted in the, the special yesterday, um, you know, and in, in my playlist for, what's it, uh, well, con sorry, uh, collating and coalescing uh, lectures from MIT uh, concerning, you know, cryptocurrency and, and finance math, which is, you know, it's a huge amount of, of information and it's high level. Uh, so it takes some time and those guys they, they 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 can talk they can really talk those those professors they're extremely knowledgeable very intelligent and you know their capacity for reason and logic obviously being in in finance and pattern recognition is uh you know uh, absolutely mind-blowing I mean, i'm speechless uh you know they can rattle things off just like like a machine gun Da, da, da. 
11.35 kilograms with full ammo, uh, 50 rounds per minute. Eleven point three five kilograms. So eleven point three five kilograms. To pounds is twenty five pounds around your neck on a sling. So you're doing it like this, right? Like a <laughs> or like a puppy. Hey, hey, hey! Let's blow some shit up. <laughs> 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 oh man yeah uh and considering i had 25 pounds on my back and then i only i only done the 40 pounder kettlebell once because i don't have the appropriate uh backpack for it i would need need a, a steel frame a rucksack or uh, a carrier that are that are available the trainers uh, let's see uh, or, yeah, so weight, harness, you can get these off of, uh, off the internet fairly easily to simulate, you know, uh, carrying the, the old school, the old school harness, I have a piece of one here. <laughs> So this is from the 90s naturally, right? So I have, I probably put a med kit in this one. Got the butt bag here and uh, one ammo, uh, one ammo here. So that'd be two rounds or two, two magazines in there for the C7. Uh, what I don't have is uh, the canteen or or the uh, you know the shoulder harness this obviously this is this is fairly typical you know hasty so the soldiers in the Canadian military will obviously will put their names on things and I could repair this at some point uh, just not right now I don't even need a duty belt or these everyday carry things. And, you know, this is this is one of them. And the attachment points and then the other ones too. You know, for the harness, the over the shoulder here. So you'd have one of these attached to the front. More more close to the front. And then, then the canteen. Right? Not so bad. stuff a lot of things in that butt bag but I don't exactly remember the contents uh, as to uh, what would be carried in that in those in like you know you never know where where those those pieces of equipment have been you know that could have been in in Bosnia it could have been in Somalia you know it could have been on some some peacekeeping trip around the world in Africa in Southeast Asia whatever you know you never really know uh, where, where stuff like that has been or what unit was with uh, well, 597, I think that was the saying. I don't remember. Nah. You, you can look it up if you really want to. Uh, what else do I have around here? Because we're talking about equipment and finance, right? And then one of the highlights that I was saying before is that when you don't have very much, well, from yesterday, you go to the surplus store. It's the most economic place to go. You know, uh, the most durable and uh you know uh, practical clothing you know I, obviously i wear a lot more gucci uh stuff now and uh 
you know, again, one of the things in cadets was like, it was always like a status symbol, you know, who could be the most military, who could be, who could be the hardest and, uh, in order to emulate our heroes, right? Uh, everyone in, in the same unit for the same goal. I don't want to sign looking in here. <clears throat> oh, weighted vests. Yeah, there we go. And there's something about these weighted vests that, <clears throat> you know, for the un uninitiated I wouldn't be wearing these for ballistic protection you know the steel plates <clears throat> because honestly like the rounds if you look it up online for the watching all these these uh, firearms channels you shoot a you shoot a steel plate and even if it's uh that's a full metal jacket <clears throat> Like it'll deform, but you'll still get, you still get <clears throat> shrapnel. That's probably gonna be a meme. You know, and a, a hollow point is designed to, to shatter. <clears throat> so it basically turns into a flechette of a, upon impact and the reason why is you know we don't civilians don't use or like the cops anyways <clears throat> don't use fmjs is because of the uh the pass through and the, the velocity right so it just goes straight through you and into the next guy and into the next guy however far the effectivity of, of the range of you know, velocity, velocity, range, uh, and mass. Which then, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> equals your MOA. And the trajectory with spin, uh, dependent upon the twist in the barrel. Now, if you're not scared, a lot of other engineers know this too. So, we should show each other respect. Just like a guy with a C9, right? The hardest guys out there. Animal mother, I mean, it's the first thing that comes to mind. Right, the flak jackets. And, you know, we, we uh, you know, obviously I've seen full metal jacket more than once. And it's a real favorite to a lot of people. And as I'm getting into this third volume here, I'm gonna talk about, uh, you know, war films. That's what I really think I want to do, uh, <clears throat> because I remember remember so many of them, and uh, you know a lot of soldiers idolize these movies as you know a, a, a perfect capture of the culture and uh, what it's like to be on the battlefield. Because not everybody has that experience, and honestly, <laughs> it's not a desirable experience. Uh, you know, considering how much boredom is involved uh, between firefights, you really have to make your own uh, entertainment. You know, just watching first-hand accounts and 
and uh, interviews. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a real person. And what am I looking at here? So historically, like if you you you, you listen to, to Forgotten Weapons, and then the origin, I'll say, what's it? The uh, well, First World War was uh, mass distribution of machine guns. portable ones at least. So this is from the Canadian War Museum. Uh, this is the Vickers, right? Or the Shawshat. Again, if it, there, you know, Ian off of Forgotten Weapons has done a lot of, of research and uh, and I can't I can't replace him and I'm not going to try <clears throat> but the gist is that Oh, the song, right? Since we're, you know, okay, so this weekend was uh, Vimy Ridge. And again, we're looking at the War Museum here. And this, this is absolutely essential to understand uh, even, you know, the current battlefield and the theater of operations because, well, war doesn't change, right? Hill 70, Passchendaele, Siberian Expeditionary Force, Armens, Mons. <clears throat> and I'm not going to get into Korea, I'm just more or less thinking about whatever comes to mind for this. Um, because that with a bang on the second volume, and you know, instead of a whimper. So we learn through collaboration. Break the fourth wall for that one. You know, and obviously, you know, um, I'm adding visual aids to to these videos, these these playlists for the first and second volume. And uh, you know, uh, because it, you're talking about, you know, as I get into war propaganda. And moving on from, uh, from you know, uh, rainbow identity politics and feminism, because uh, there's so much more to talk about, and you know how I'm highlighting uh, the technology and distribution, and then which then inspires or say causes not correlated to. Uh, mass psychosis. This, this is why I added the after school uh, video to, let's see, where did I put it? Uh, to the first volume. And again, talking about stress hormones. Let's see, we'll find something on that in YouTube. So I'm going to, this is from Ted, uh, Sharon Horsch Berquist. I didn't read this, uh, but let's go by the neuroscience. 
it seems like a decent presentation. You understand? Well, what you mean? Go from neuroscientifically challenged. I'll put this into into the first volume. Now, uh, I grew up in the era with PowerPoint and a whiteboard and, you know, doing the rewriting POs and EOs lesson plans. Let's see if I can find something here. So this was my briefcase. It should look familiar to some of you. So again, so we're looking at instructional techniques here, that's PO40704. And you know, there's, I have my reasons for doing these videos amongst and motivations and uh, you know I don't blame the command of my squadron uh, for what they you know their what they did uh, with their decisions and how they made their decisions because you know everybody has has their faults and everybody has humanity we all make mistakes uh, but the gist of it is here you know, again, we're looking at the very basics of it at the beginning crest, right? So comparison, reasons, examples, statistics, and testimony. Uh, then using visual age, visual aids, which I, I'm trying to do right now, uh, approach, uh, sorry, appeal to the senses, uh, teach the students, be realistic, and set a pattern, right? So you include sources of the, the internet, other people. This is plain, so commercial. Uh, I don't exactly remember what that means. Immigrate, I say imagination, that's right. So, you know, the. So IT, right, getting this is February, this is February 26, 2002, right, a completely different era of cadets and, you know, completely different idea of, uh, you know, like teaching uh, and instruction uh, that has been, as far as I can tell, completely removed, uh, but I don't know that, right, for certain, it's just that when I talk to other people that were long-term CIC and, you know, some of them still are, uh, that the program really changed and it's not the same as it used to be for, you know, because of these, these, these ideologies of, of, uh, you know, the gender ideology, the propaganda, the subject subjectivity, uh, you know, and the, the complete erasure of identity in favor of, you know, this, this conformity, uh, that for which is, you know, delusional. Right. Yes, you want conformity in a unit and you want to have, you know, organized structure. You want to have that overlap of the machine gun, so to speak, right, coverage. Yeah. Well, I got some poetry in here I completely forgot about. 
I don't, I don't know if I want to. I want to. I want to. <laughs> I don't know if I want to read it. It could be really embarrassing. I haven't looked at this in years. I remember, you know, a lot of hours in front of the computer writing these, <clears throat> rewriting these. So what I got here, so this, this is, I have 404-404.2. It's got uniform care. So this is, what's this here? So I still bring this up. Uh, addict organization. Oh, so this is from high school actually. This is from my high school philosophy, this particular thing. Uh, I don't know why it's just mixed in, but nonetheless. And here we go, this is interesting. Just to pull this out of nowhere. So, you know, a lot of times there's suggestions when it comes to education. Uh, when, you know, the, the, your teacher is uh, trying to communicate something. And even in the annotated bibli bibliography, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to watch the TV series as I've gotten through the first season. And I'm not going to close the second volume just yet uh, to move on to wartime propaganda and to... Uh, because, you know, there's still some things I want to highlight. And it's and just, I'm, I'm, I'm really exhausted having lived through it 
with the you know the financial crisis and financial warfare and having to to repeatedly explain what's going on as it is right now 2023 and how we got here uh and at the top here is handmade still Okay, so what do we got here? This is stuff I remember too. So like 413. So, you know, obviously I was uh, I was teaching ground school as is part of uh, is part of the, the cadet education. Okay. So that's plot of flight plan. And navigation, I was teaching that as well. So 417.03 here. I still have uh, documents from the day. So again, this is you know this is why cadets is so valuable because it's uh, it's very similar. It's almost on on the nose as to how in the mil you know uh, rake force and uh, reserve units operate. Right? It's it just basically the same. So we have twenty seven. Great NCO. And you know, what, what really they don't tell you is that, well, okay, so I put this together is that if I'm the drill sergeant and I'm the DSM, the drill sergeant major, that also means I'm responsible for teaching and leading on the, on, in the field. Uh, so like seven section battle drills and teaching people that stuff. So going further, you know, let's just say like 417, so that's uh, plotting instruments and flight plan. You freaking, I can't believe this. I'm not going to put this on up here because it's, uh, it's personal information. But uh, I got a good job. Uh, for this list. Yeah, this is pretty mixed in. I don't know how this got in here, but it doesn't matter. It, but actually, I do probably know how this got in here, MLA. And then we're, here we go. Here's a lot of people's favorites. Conduct of a drill lesson. Now, I've seen the, uh, seen the, the visual aid, the, the, the video from the 90s. And then we're getting into citizenship. You know, again, this is this is fairly random, and I don't have everything. Uh, but uh, irreplaceable.
Forgive me for being a bit slow on this one. We're going to be getting, what, 35 minutes. But, you know, again, I haven't, I haven't seen this in, in years, really. Should have been a warrant. You know, and again, this is this stuff is on on my Instagram, but not everyone goes there. This is this is from I don't know exactly where when this is from. This was uh, printed in 1977, and uh, you know I have I have patches and stuff in here, but this is uh, I got this from a friend of a friend, the old E6 E6B. And so I wouldn't, uh, personally, I would not be using a digital computer. Uh, I'm just not interested in that. Okay. So this is all, all drill. Whatever, it's good enough. Right, now with a bang, not with a whimper. I'm still here.